This is the Devil's Guide to D&D. Devil's Delegate here for my third video on the changed classes for one D&D from the new playtest material. And yes, once again, this video is sloppy. Now it's the Ranger, and it's got a lot of improvements. But all those improvements do less than they should and don't address the fundamental problems with the class. It's like having an Edsel that's been shined up and given an improved carburetor and premium tires. It's the best Edsel ever, but it's still an Edsel, and I'd rather have a BMW. If you already like the Ranger, then you'll like this one. If you didn't, nothing here is going to change that. The 1 D&D Ranger is a variant from the one from Tasha's. That's where the real changes were made. The 2014 Player's Handbook Ranger had a lot of flavor to it, feeling like that nature warrior, but mechanically was weak. Tasha's reduced the flavor and improved the mechanics. This version does that again, finding there was still a thematic feature that could be deleted, but again, the mechanics are better. I'll stick with comparing it to the Tasha's version. And just as with the Rogue, the first boost, and perhaps the most significant, isn't with the class, but with the new rule on two-handed fighting, which allows for an offhand attack as part of the attack action instead of as a bonus action. This is a boon to melee rangers, coming close to making them viable. Our first change to the class comes at level 1 with magic casting, which has been moved up from level 2, and that's the least of the improvements. Like all casters now, the ranger is a prepared spellcaster, so a lot more versatility in his spells and has ritual casting, which is really significant on a half caster with few spell slots. And there's more. It looks like all casting classes are using the spell slot table to determine how many spells they can prepare, which, unlike the bard where this hurt, for the ranger, it's a significant increase. A fifth level ranger used to know four spells. Now he has six. For most levels, it's a gain of two to six spells. And on top of that, he gets cantrips. Can it get better? Yeah, because there's no longer class spell lists, which wasn't a plus for the bard. But for rangers, it opens up the entire primal list, with the exception of evocation spells. So rangers lose about 6 spells from what they could take before, and gain 20 to 25. That's a lot of buffs, just better across the board. Now here's why it isn't that exciting. All those spells help with some utility, but don't do much more than that. Firstly, a ranger avoids the monk mad fate by not worrying about wisdom. So all those new spells? If casting ability matters, then the ranger won't be much good with them. Combined with the limited spell slots, and yeah, the ranger can dabble in control and buffing, but never be actually good at them. And being a better dabbler than before doesn't mean much in 5e. This is a game where you should be really good, or don't bother. And same as before, the ranger's just a dabbler in healing. Your party still needs someone good in all these things, in which case it doesn't matter if the ranger is a little better than before. And the primal awareness feature, optional from Tasha's, is nowhere to be found. So that's five spells that each had a free casting that are gone. Even ritual casting, which is nice, isn't that nice since the primal list has few ritual spells and fewer good ones. In combat, the ranger's still better off just worrying about weapon attacks and using a spell to buff that. Same as before. Sure, while your party is camping in the woods, a mid-level ranger is going to be far more ready and willing to cast Animal Messenger than he was before, for all the times when that's been vital. But first level has more changes. There is Favored Enemy, which is a rewrite of Tasha's favorite foe. The 2014 Favored Enemy is gone. Which now means the Hunter's Mark spell is always prepared, and a ranger can cast it without concentration. But they could do that before. The only change is not having to concentrate, which is a plus. But other concentration spells are rarely worth the slots, so yeah, it's nice, but not that nice. And the cost was losing the pseudo Hunter's Mark from Favored Foe meaning between the old favored foe and the spell, a low-level ranger could buff his attacks more often than this one. So at early levels, this is a nerf. And why is Hunter's Mark still a spell? We've been asking forever for this to be a feature. It's just better design. The final change is Expertise, an upgrade of Canny, which was part of Deft Explorer. The ranger gets Expertise in two skills, and I love Expertise. It's really good, but less so on a ranger. Bards and rogues are designed to make use of being really good at a few things. For a ranger, usually being okay is good enough with survival and animal handling. I suppose excelling in stealth and perception will be good on a ranger. Not as good as on a rogue. Yes, it's a nice boost. And multi-classers are gonna love it. But it isn't the boost the ranger needed. So three changes, all arguably boosts and two of them huge boosts. And none of them make that big a difference. It's putting nitro on my Etzel. Okay, second level, fighting style, as before, except a little less. All the Tasha's additions are missing. Blind fighting, thrown weapons, druidic warrior is obsolete. But also missing is dueling. No more sword and board rangers. Huh, thought that's what Aragorn was. It mentions a ranger can pick up the fighting style feats, which he can do now, but feats are costly. Stick to archery, or two weapon fighting now that it's better. 
Third is the subclass, and all classes are getting their subclass features at the same level, so that changes from 7th, 11th, and 15th to 6th, 10th, and 14th. Pretty much I'm for this change, since it allows subclasses to define the character early enough for it to matter. Fourth is a feat, which could be an ASI, like before. Fifth is extra attack, same. Sixth is, as mentioned, a subclass feature. Before we had roving here. That moves to seventh, climb speed and swim speed, like before. But the walking speed is increased 10 instead of 5. An okay feature, and fine that it's later. Eighth is a feat, as before. Missing here is land stride, the last of the original flavorful features. So no more striding through thorn bushes. It wasn't good, but I'll miss it. Ninth is expertise, which again, I like. I'm just less excited for it with a ranger. Tenth, subclass feature instead of tireless, which moves to eleventh. And instead of nature's veil, that moves to thirteenth. At eleventh, now it's tireless, which has been nerfed. Before, you could use an action to gain some temp hit points. Now you do it at the end of a rest. It was better doing it closer to where you'd need it, and as it was proficiency number of times before, chances are it would be more often. So, yeah, less exciting here. You can also get rid of a level of exhaustion, as before. I don't find this coming up much. If it does for you, then this is better than the nothing it is for me. Twelfth level is a feat, as before. Thirteenth is where Nature's Veil landed, replacing a dead level. Before, you had a free bonus action invisibility, usable proficiency bonus number of times, and that lasted until the start of your next turn. Now, it lasts till the end of your next turn, which is clearly better. That's two turns worth of attacks while invisible. But it's no longer free. It costs a spell slot, which is something a ranger doesn't have many of. On a cost-benefit analysis, this is a downgrade. If you are one of those strange rangers that had unused spell slots all over the place, then this is an upgrade. At least the move to 13th means you'd have a few more spell slots. But then that invisibility was also stronger at 10th. So yeah, I'm sticking to this being a nerf. 14th is a subclass feature. The old vanish is gone, so no more hiding as a bonus action. 15th grants blind sight. I like it. Too late to build a character around it, but it will be useful. 16th, feet as before. 17th is a dead level, and it was before. I could have put some useless flavorful ability here. 18th gets a very much changed Foe Slayer, moved from 20th. The old Foe Slayer lets you add Wizmod damage to a single attack each turn against one of your favored enemies, and is considered the worst capstone in the game. The new version changes the damage die from Hunter's Mark from a d6 to a d10. Ugh. Well, it's certainly better, mainly because it isn't limited to favored enemies. The increased damage averages to 2 points, but figure at least 2 attacks, so 4 points. Whoopee. And it requires you to have Hunter's Mark going, which is horrible game design. Don't buff a spell, make it a feature. 19th is a feat, as before, and 20th is an epic boon. Same for all classes in 1D&D. &D. And that's the Ranger. After first level, a few nerfs and a few buffs, but nothing radical. The big changes all come at first, and as I said, while they are generally improvements, and theoretically very big improvements, I don't think it matters that much. It's a supercharged Etzel with a boss stereo. As with the others, there's a subclass, the Hunter, generally considered the most boring ranger subclass, and rightly so. Power-wise, it's been eclipsed by multiple far better subclasses. So, did they add Nitro to this Ford Pinto, or did they actually upgrade the chassis? Well, the other hallmark, besides being boring, of this subclass was that it gave you options. No longer. Third level Hunter's Prey now only offers the Colossus Slayer option. It was the best of the three, though Horde Breaker was okay. Hunter's Prey isn't great, but it's not bad, so I don't see why Watsi felt the need to nerf it some more. Now the extra damage can only be applied when you take the attack action, so no go with reaction attacks. The seventh level defensive tactics is gone. It wasn't great, so that's okay. Replaced by the sixth level Hunter's Lore, the ranger knows a target's immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities if they've got Hunter's Mark on it. I've heard people raving about this, and I don't get it. Now, it is flavorful, and I'm for that. I'm not as fond of the design. Again, you have to have the Hunter's Mark spell going. Please make that a feature. So this feature is non-existent when you are out of spell slots. But my bigger question is, what kind of campaigns are people playing in? Most of the time, you know a target's immunities, resistances, etc. And a good proportion of the remaining times, it doesn't matter. You're gonna use what you've got. This is too circumstantial to be the only 6th level feature. Plus, don't other DMs give out that info on successful survival or nature or arcana checks? 10th gets a redone multi-attack. Gone again are the options. Really, all of them, but this is mostly a replacement for the ranged attack option called Volley. 
you get a spell prepared, which is less of a big deal than it used to be for a ranger at this level. You could just prepare a conjure barrage yourself if you wanted it, but why would you want it as it's a terrible spell? And as a half-caster, straight damage spells are always a bad idea because you're so far behind. Conjure Barrage does an average of 6 points of damage to creatures if they save, and 13 if they don't. So for 3rd level, it sucks. And a ranger's spell DC is gonna be poor, so that 6 is gonna be the norm. But the area is huge, so every once in a while it would be worth the spell slot. Not often though. Ah, but this non-feature has another part. You can downcast the spell, decreasing the damage by 1d8. Which, if you want to use it, you'd probably need to do since you don't have that many spell slots. Great. You can cast this as a first level spell. In which case, it will do 2 points of damage to a number of enemies. At 10th level, 2 points. Wee. This is way worse than volley. That wasn't great, but it didn't require a spell slot and would probably be a good thing to do a couple times a day. That leaves us with Superior Hunter's Defense. Again, the choice is missing. Instead, they combine them into one feature. It's Uncanny Dodge, but you can redirect the half of the damage you didn't take to somebody else. I'm having a hard time picturing what that's supposed to look like in combat. The redirect is only going to happen occasionally, but it does mean this is a buff from before. So now with no choices, a slight nerf to one feature and two weak features, the new Hunter has managed to be worse than the old. Yeah, this is bad, but the hunter wasn't all that good anyway, so it just means they didn't correct enough. And that's the entire story for the ranger. They changed things quite a bit, but didn't change things enough, or didn't change what they needed to. The flawed foundations are still here, meaning a good ranger still absolutely requires a great subclass, so nothing's changed. Take Gloomstalker, and both the 5e ranger and the 1d&d ranger will be good. Put this hunter on either of them, and it won't be. And that's the expert classes. Overall, I'm disappointed. I hate what they've done to the bard. I'd have liked a bit more tweaking for the rogue and a more thought out redesign of the ranger. And don't forget to fill out the survey. These can be improved before publication. And I'm done. That's a lot of D&D for the last few days. Maybe I'll go watch a movie. And maybe you could like this video or subscribe. Maybe?